pre-civil rights, it was okay to be openly racist in the southern states of America. When the people in the northern states of America saw the violence and aggression and hatred of the racists in the south, including towards women and children, they were horrified and concluded that it was impossible, therefore, to be racist and be a good moral person. Those two things were mutually exclusive. This developed this binary understanding about racism and racists, that racists were bad, uh, ignorant, bigoted haters, and non-racists were progressive, educated, open-minded people, or the people in the North. <laughs> Later on, Malcolm X, uh, referring to that definition of racism by white people, said, okay, so it's a choice then, is it between the Southern wolf or the Northern fox? <laughs> It is either a choice between the obvious, overt um, racism of the South or the more subtle, covert version of racism in the North, which, if anything, could be more dangerous. The point is, guys, that when we define racism in that binary way and we decide that we come out on the good side of the binary, I'm not a racist, I'm a good person, then we have nothing more to learn. And what happens is the very suggestion, the very, the, very, the very breathed idea that we might be racist as white people gives us a heart attack. We have a panic attack because we kind of think it's like our moral character is being attacked. So we, take, we use all our energy in those moments to defend ourselves, to defend our moral character because we feel that's what's at stake. And instead of using our energy to grow and to listen and to learn and check ourselves, we use it to defend ourselves. I'm not a racist because when we hear racist, we hear bad person. And we feel we're not a bad person. This is because, guys, we keep defining racism as individual acts of hatred and prejudice and discrimination against black people. And whilst ever you define racism as that and feel you've never done that, then you feel you're innocent and don't have anything to learn. Let me put it to you this way. Racism is like being born male in Afghanistan or Saudi Arabia. To be born male in those countries is to be born artificially privileged to the huge cost and disadvantage of women. To be born white is to be born artificially privileged and advantaged and empowered to the cost and disadvantage of black people and people of color. Can you see that now? Can you see what we're trying to say, what we white people need to learn? I'm not saying it's your fault you were born male in that scenario or born white in the racism scenario. It's not. Black people aren't saying it's your fault that you're born white. What they're saying is it's our fault if becoming aware that we are in a system that privileges us to the disadvantages of others, we don't do something about it if we don't speak up, if we don't play our part in dismantling the system, if we don't consciously uncouple and get divorced from the arranged marriage we were born into. You didn't choose this partner. This partner was chosen for us, upstream of us. But to live your life, to go through your life, being aware of that and not play your part in dismantling it at the micro level, interrupting racist jokes perhaps, or the macro level, change of government policy, is to not play our part on our watch. This is all black people are asking us to do. So can we stop defining racism as individual acts of hatred and see it as a system that we are all part of and we need to play our part in dismantling it? That's all I'm doing on these, that's all I'm doing on these videos. All right, sending love and prayers and blessings to you beautiful people. Let's keep growing and learning, eh? Love you guys. Thank you.